So on the screen, I've got two entities. I've got my idol over here. Over here, I have a class. The class is called aa.py. This aa file has one, two classes in it. It's got class A, and it's got class B. Both of them have an initializer in it. Define under, under, init, under, under. Here's the initializer. And class B also has an initializer in it. Under, under, init, under, under. And this is its initializer. Now, class B over here has a method in it here. And this method is called B1. That's this guy. And over here in class A, it has a method also. But this guy's method is called CB, B1. That means call B's, that's class B, call B's B1 method. So what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a variable in the classic manner with class A. And we're going to pass it class A. Something that will enable the call the B class B1 method to actually call this B class's B1 method and run it. That will be interesting. Here we go. Now, the first thing I have to do is import everything that's in AA into my idle. And the way I do that is I key in from the AA library, import everything, and bingo, it's done. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll use a variable. I'll we'll call it R. R is equal to the following. I want to instantiate the class called A. And I'm going to pass it something. And that's something that I pass it within these parentheses is going to get caught here in A1. Whatever I put within these parentheses, that's going to get put into A1. All right, let's put uh, something in there. What are we going to put in there? We're going to put something in there that will go what that will give the call B class B1 method all the information it needs to get to here and then get to here and run this. All right, what information does this guy need that we can pass to it through A1? Now, when we pass something to A1, that's going to get assigned to under A1. And call BB1, call B classes B1 method, has access to this under A1 fella here. So it indirectly accesses that past information. What information shall I give it? This is what I'm going to pass to him. The name of the target class that I'm going to be calling B. And I'm also going to pass him something else. Look what pops up on my screen, B2. I've got to give him something so that when he calls B2, he's got to hand him something. He's got to put something into that variable B2, period. Class B expects that. It's mandatory. Mandatory? How do you know that? Well, look at the parentheses. It is clearly required. B2 is in parentheses. It's expecting to get data. Well, what's he going to, what's he going to hand to him? I'll hand him a little message. I'm going to key in uh, B2 is going to be equal to calling the B classes uh, B1 method. Well, just a little string. Has no uh, programmatic value. It just has to be placed into the variable B2, period. This is going to be dropped into B2. All right. So I have matching parens there. I need a matching paren for this guy. So what are we doing again? We're calling the class A. We're going to pass it all of this data. That's going to get put into A1 here. That's what we know so far. Now I hit enter. And it's done. No errors. So it instantiated the class A into R, and I've passed it this information. That information in the very next line now got placed into A1 here. A1's information is now assigned to self.under A1. The self.under A1 variable 
is a special variable defined within the initialization routine, which now makes it accessible to everything within that class. That is super duper important because call B classes B1 method, CBB1, is about to access it. Let's see how. So I key in the following. Mr. R, yes, I want you to run the CBB1 method in class A. Here's class A. Here's CBB1. R is the instantiation of this entire class. It has CBB1 in it. R, execute your CBB1 method. Now, when I hit enter, the system jumps over to here. No parameters to accept. It only has self there. That's automatic. And it's going to return the following. Go over to self dot under A1. That's this guy over here. Grab that data. Now, this is a command. And what's in self under A1? This. And this is what he's saying. Go to the B class. And when you get to the B class, he's got a variable in there that expects some data. So this is what you got to do. Take his B2 variable and fill it with this data, calling B-B1. Just drop that text in there. Otherwise, he'll get very angry. He goes over to the B class. He drops calling B-B1 into this variable here. He's now finished with this part. Dot. Now, I want you to execute this guy's, class B's, B1 method. And he jumps over to B, and he goes looking for B1. So he's over here, B. And where's B1? There's B1. And what does B1 tell him to do? Return back to me. Whatever's in self dot under B2. Well. When I dropped calling B-B1 into B2, what did class B automatically do? It jumped down here as a continuation of its initialization method here. It jumped down here and took B2 and assigned him to self dot under B2. Okay, these two guys now are same the same. But because it's self dot under B2, the data in this variable can be referenced by anybody that's in this class, any method that's in this class. Wonderful. Otherwise, he'd have a very hard time getting to that data. So what does B1 tell him to do? B1 tells him to take what's in self dot under B2 and return them to me right here. Open close friends. When I hit enter, you're going to see that pop up down here. Otherwise, I shall retire to Sussex and raise bees. Here we go. Oh, it worked. I don't have to go to Sussex and raise bees. Oh, wonderful. So we call that class interaction, and we call me, George Bull. Please share and rate this video, and good luck.